Au revoir. All right, welcome to another episode of Fit Pet Boston Talks. My name is Leah Lodato, and I am the host of the show. And today I am joined by my spouse, Laurie. Hello. And the great and powerful Melissa Molander. Hello. Missy Mo. Thank you so <laughs> much for tuning in to the show. If you are new, thank you for listening here. Be sure to subscribe on whatever uh, platform you're listening on. It really helps us out. And share it with your friends. If you have found anything that we have to say valuable means the world to us. This is just a little side project that I do. Uh, by day, I am a dog walker. We're all dog trainers, and we all do a variety of different dog sports and activities with our own personal dogs. Melissa is a good friend of ours, and uh, also Melissa and I would be Laurie's uh, mentees. We mm -hmm. have learned a great amount from you, Laurie, so we both collectively thank you. I'm speaking on her behalf at this mm -hmm. time. She's smiling awkwardly. Poor it's Laurie. So she needs awkward. attention. Why? <laughs> You're a teacher. What's wrong with saying it out loud? Oh, grasshoppers. Everyone deserves to be taught by a Laurie. Yeah. Grasshoppers. Yes, <laughs> they do. Even if it's just learn how to clean shit. Oh, Laurie, my God. You, you know, will be a better person. If everybody could learn how to clean from Laurie, the world would be better. Oh, hands down. Yeah, hands down. Eat off the floor. The, that whole COVID That's thing would all have been day no yesterday. problem. <laughs> I was like, you could eat off this floor if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we thought we'd talk a little bit today about the idea of saying no to your dog and also talk a little bit about where to find uh, training advice, especially if you already have a dog trainer that you trust. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We'll start with that topic. If you are working with a dog trainer that you trust, somebody that has a good reputation in your local area, somebody that gets good reviews online, somebody that has a clean working space, somebody that does things with their own personal dogs, and somebody that you can learn from. If you trust that person, you should be able to ask them questions via text or email or pick up the phone and give them a call. And that person should be able to guide you in a direction. They should give you an answer. And if you do that, it will save you a humongous headache because if you go online and you start Googling or chat GPTing answers to these questions, you are going to become confused. And confusion, in my opinion, is the enemy of dog training because mm -hmm. it's going to confuse you. And then you're going to go try to teach your dog a bunch of stuff and they're going to look at you like, what the hell are you doing? And it's more difficult to make progress. So if you have a good dog trainer, listen to what they say and ask them questions. I'll give one example before I let these lovely ladies talk. But I was doing a class with somebody the other day and she opened the door to her house and she had the dog on a leash and she looked behind her shoulder and she goes, you know, I've been trying to get him to wait at thresholds. And I said, okay, uh, did you ask him to wait? And she said, no, I just want him to start waiting at thresholds. I said, why do you want to do that? And she said, well, I was looking on Instagram and I was like, oh boy. <laughs> and these mm -hmm. dog trainers have their dog waiting at thresholds. And I said, okay, if your house was burning down and your door opened, would you want your dog to stand there and wait at the threshold? And she said, well, no. I said, if you wanted him to stand there at the threshold, what would you say? And she said, I would say, wait. I said, why would you tell him to wait? And she goes, because that's what I taught him to do. I said, bingo. If you taught him how to wait, there's no reason to go through this whole... She's like, but I saw this guy on Instagram and he had like 10 dogs and they all walked up to the door and she opened the door and none of them went through and it was so cool. And I was just like, in my head, I was like, but do you see how that just degraded everything that made sense in your mind as mm -hmm. far as you taught the dog to wait, you ask the dog to wait, the dog completes the task and then you give them an another directive. And that was just one very small example of how it can get really confusing if you're asking too much of mm -hmm. the resources that you have. Um, so I figured we'd just talk a little bit about that today. I don't know if either of you guys want to dive into that real quick. Um, well, the other thing, like, so you mentioned, you know, she saw a video of dogs waiting. So here's my thing with videos and the internet. You... Woo, here we go. Well, it can be edited. 
right? It so, can be edited. So that, I would argue that it is. So that person, <laughs> you know, they cut off the first five seconds of the video where they're like, you, you wait, you wait. <laughs> And you the dog, wait or I kill you. Yeah, and all the dogs are like, oh, shit, we better wait right here. And then they're like, okay, everybody. And here's me and my 10 dogs. Look at them all waiting. And then you notice. So I've, I, like, I've seen a video very similar. It's this woman who has these 10, 10 varying breeds of dogs. Every time she lets a dog out, you can see the video. It's like a clip. So she'll be like, oh, Reuben. Reuben comes out. And then you see a quick little cut in the video. And then it's the group of dogs that are left. And I've noticed even a few times, you know, one dog that was on the left was then on the right, sure. which tells you those dogs broke their weight at the door. They were moving. They and, were moving. Oh and my shaking. God, they moved. They reset. Which is life. Mm. Sometimes I wish people would post some of that stuff. It's okay to post the learning process because then it might make those people who are seeing the videos, you know, be a little less worked up about it and and antsy like my dog has to do this well you missed the five mistakes that the dogs made and the owner corrected and then you know reguided the dog back to what they wanted them to do because they just posted the pretty stuff yeah yeah i said it in a few podcasts ago but being able to dif differentiate between something that's educational and something that's entertainment mm -hmm. is like so clutch, you guys. If you're listening and you're a client, you're just a regular dog trainer, I mean dog owner, and you're consuming something, ask yourself, is this meant to teach me something or just entertain me? Like yeah. I love every dog tra uh, video that Laurie sends me because it's pure entertainment. Yes, it's pure hilarity. Uh huh. It's like a Rottweiler riding on the back of a motorcycle, like loving his life with goggles on. With goggles on. Yeah. It's like, and and he's like into it. You know, he's like woo wooing. You know, it's hilarious. It's entertainment. You know, like videos that are trying to instruct or teach. If that video is fifteen seconds long, it is not teaching you anything. It's teaching you how to get frustrated because you're going to see it see something that might be an end result or it might even be in the middle yep. you have no idea you know so even if you respect the trainer and you enjoy the content just make sure that you're always asking yourself is this educational or is this entertainment because let me tell you the video content that i consume that's educational is boring it is so boring that sometimes I'm like, I want to speed this up. And on yes. one of my <laughs> one of yep. my subscriptions, I can't like the instructor like disabled the ability to speed oh, up the no. video. I know. So you got to sit there and watch it. And it's tedium. But it's tedious. Be and, and I'm not there. So it doesn't have that live element of me like handling the dog. So I'm like, oh, my God, this is so difficult but i always get something out of it it's good stuff but again it's not entertaining yep. so chances are if you see something on social media and you're like oh that's really cool i want to try that it's okay to have that response but consult with somebody that could actually teach you or yes. maybe show it to somebody and be like hey what do you think of it? like if my client sent me a video and they're like what do you think of this like i'll tell them my honest opinion yeah you know like i think that's stage or i think that's cool or hey i really like that product like lily sent me the product of the bird um the um the you know you know those bir fake birds that i have um for oh Raven. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, the like, decoy sent, birds. she sent me a video with that product and i was like yes i i want to buy this these are so cool so it's like i'm not saying that everything that is online is trash but being able to differentiate between the stuff that's useful and not is like so freaking important you guys like there's just so much garbage out there that's mm -hmm. useless i felt bad because i sent a few videos out to customers and it was a lot of shaping the down behavior and just clicking and feeding sits and pay attention. And cause I knew the videos were so boring, especially for the down, but I wanted the modesty when I named it, you know, to, from the point where you're luring the dog to where the dog's offering the behavior. I'm like, this is so boring. She's not going to want to watch this, but I did. I videotaped it yep. all. And so She's like, okay, I get it. I'm like, stop talking. Don't say the word down right away. And it just be able to just really, t to me, it was, I'm like, nobody's going to want to watch this. Or sometimes if you're in the middle of a class, you feel so rushed to get results. Or you know, now I say to people, hey, listen, I know this isn't happening quickly. It will happen. You just have yep. to give me a moment. We're all going to focus. 
this will be. Things don't happen overnight, and I have to remind myself of that all the time. But yeah, I felt bad for the... I'm like, if I posted this <laughs> on Instagram, I would have to speed it up. Yeah, I would have to add some kind of flair because while the person would get the point and be like, oh, I can get this. I'm very one, two, three when I train a dog I, step by step, and that's how I teach I, mm-hmm. I teach people step by step like you guys I felt like I did that mm-hmm. and I was like just hang in hang in there with me folks just think if yeah. it's Laurie <laughs> it's very simple it's one step at a time and save your words stop being in such a rush to label something mm. like praise the dog but stop putting labels on everything right away let's wait till it's perfect just right and then name it everybody wants to name everything so quickly. Anyway, so my videos would probably have not enough pizzazz is what I'm saying. I love that point, though, Lari. I love that point because I'm in the same boat. Like, I'll take a four minute video. I'm like, oh, my God, this is so mm-hmm. boring. But that's what instruction actually is. Am I going to go po- post that as an Instagram reel? Not unless I want to lose followers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be frank, nobody wants to see that. No, but if it's going to help but the owner. If it's, if it's, I'll WhatsApp you that. By the way, dog trainers, if you're not using WhatsApp, you got to use it because that'll, it'll allow you to send long videos to your clients. Because like iMessage and Android, Apple, Apple I this think it's like that. a four minute max. Yeah, they have a nice long. That's nice. Yeah, it's really nice to send a longer video. But anyway. Videos might work better than uh, emails. No, no, yeah, I have found it so much easier to instead of like long like i don't do long follow-up emails anymore i don't either anymore i think that people it it, it depends on the person like if i have a person who tells me like i do really well if i read things if i read it then i will send them all of the information in the world yep but you know i find most people like the video laurie was just talking about that one video that's all that person's gonna need after we work together, they have the video teaching their puppy how to lay down. Instead of typing each step yes. out. Yeah, which isn't going to work. Because then they take it, they rewind. They're like, oh, what did she do right here? The puppy laid down and then she clicked and fed. Yeah. You know, they have all of it right there. One way, like it worked. There's results and they're like, great. I can just follow this and mimic it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just such a great point. Oh, man, there's like so much good stuff in this conversation. But I think understanding that people learn in different ways is really important. There is sometimes where I don't send a follow up email because a follow up email is kind of the same thing as them going online and searching if they're yes. not understanding. It can confuse if, them more. If it's after the very first class. I make it really short. I'm, I'm always like, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. We had a great class. Like, here's some dates for the for the next class. And I might mention what we covered, but I'm not going to... Get ex- into detail. No, I'm not going to get into detail because it, 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 probably half of that stuff went over their head anyway. Oh, yeah. So waiting until the next class. Okay, so if I send like a really long diatribe, right, it could be the same as if they Googled it. Because they're all they're they're still in that like discovery phase yep. of trying to learn this stuff. So for me, being hands on is like the most important thing. Like I don't care about the emails and the video as much as I do just trying to make the most of the time in the class. And I accept a lot of mistakes. I know it drives Larry batshit bananas because sometimes she like is in my class <laughs> on the computer and as somebody, especially if they're a kid, like they're trying to work through something uh, and they just try. Like at this point, I know it's so bad, but like if the person is just trying, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, that was good. Okay, but next time let's do it like this. Oh, and yeah. And then they repeat exactly the well, same exact you- mistake as that they did before. And I say the same <laughs> thing. I said, that was, I said, great, but we're going to try to do it again like this. And then sometimes Laurie will pop up and. <laughs> Laurie's like, okay, to- hang on no, one but- second here. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I, I know. I- <laughs> Wait a minute. I do I do the same thing. I'm constantly repeating directions. I allow for error. I think it's more I, that I'm no, not mean. so no, 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 I'm not saying you're mean. You, I'm you're saying more direct. You're like you're okay. much more direct and you accept it. Let's I don't try it I'll this accept way. things that you wouldn't. Yes. Just because I see effort and then I'll fix it later on down the road. But I I It's not a bad thing, honey. But I applaud effort. Yeah. 
I just like of okay, course you okay. applaud effort. You you'll put on a happy dance for someone when they get something okay. right. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Like a dog. Yeah. A dog was walking so nice the other day with the a dog. I'm like, this is blowing my hair back. Is this blowing your hair back? Do you know how many times I have to tell myself in a cl- in a class? I'm like, shut up, Calm Melissa. Down. Shut up, because the dogs, you know, doing great, walking nicely, and I'm like, woo! And the dogs like, hell yeah! And I'm like, oh. You want Sorry, to see I want to throw you a party, but I'm going to stay quiet in my corner over here and support you silently. <laughs> I think it's funny, and this is this is kind of segueing a little bit. I always think it's interesting when people are surprised when their dogs get it. Oh, when it works, and they're yes. like, "Oh, this like actually works," and I'm like. What are you paying for? I get more excited when the owner gets it. I'm like, you figured it out. Yeah, but I'm like, what? They're, they're like literally shocked. And I'm just, I'm standing there and I'm like, I think people, yeah, sometimes are like, I got a dog. I got to do training. Check. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they're not actually like, no goals. This isn't going to work. Yeah, yeah, this isn't going to work. We're throwing food at the dog. I went to a train. All they did was throw food at the dog. I love it when people say stuff oh, like that. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Um, what am I going to feed them for the rest of their lives? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, do you work for free? Just, did you learn how to do things? <laughs> <laughs> what it's about this time. clicker? Do you use this all the time? When do I have to use this using? when they go to the bathroom too? Can you... <laughs> if I was a dog, I'd just take the clicker, i bite it and throw it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so no, funny, it's, you guys. No, I think it's it's definitely like, oh, it's dog training is so nuanced. I think that that's what it comes down to. Yes, we have our formula that Laurie taught and we still use. But at the same time, there's progression, right? So like with the video that you probably sent the client, like there's the luring to the, you know, to the offering. Shaping. To the shape. So that now you add the cue. Now, when, you know, and it's all. And if you don't also, if you're the handler and you don't have the mindset of like, okay, we just finished this task. Now we move on to this other task and it's going to require something different. Some people cannot get over that. They're like, but you told me to do this. I'm like, yes, I know I told you to do that. But now we're moving to this other thing that is going to build on what we learned before. Mm -hmm. And that's really challenging for some people too. So to when we were talking about emails versus videos, I do ask the people now, I go, hey, listen, if I write you an email, are you going to read it or do you prefer this? They said, mm-hmm. oh, no, I prefer this. Or I have some very type A people, which I can relate to. Laurie, give me a list. I need a list of things. I said, fine, I'm going to write you a list and you're going to do it. But when I said, and it works out because I don't waste my time writing an email that you're never going to read. I'll send you a video. But if I, but if you come to like the second class and you don't have any treats on you or you don't have a clicker, I just I want to slash a tie is I, I don't <laughs> or know. Or when you show up to the puppy puppy client's house, the puppies s- smashing through the front door. Yeah. The o- the owners are on the other side of the house, and they're like, "Oh, you were coming today." Yeah, it was like you were supposed to keep the dog at least in the crate, or or please don't feed the dog. I remember one time I went to a, a class, and oh. the dog was so bloated. I go, what's <laughs> I go, what's going on? I the it's dog like the dog have worms or belly the, the dog was passed out <laughs> at the door, and they said, oh, we just gave him three cups of food, and I'm like, oh my god. And you're like, bye, see you tomorrow. I was like, this is, and he was in a puppy coma because yeah. when they're that age, he was so he was fat and passed out. Yep. I said, what am I going to do with this thing? She said, those are great treats. What do you use? I'm like, well, they're the same treats I put in the email um, with <laughs> oh, the link. Yep. That was directly to Chewy and Amazon. You didn't even have to think about it. You could have just click clicked away to your heart's content, and you would have been ready for class. And then one lady, you, you know, the liver treats that come in the bucket, <laughs> they're huge. Yeah, oh yeah. So I put oh, those no. bad Larrys on a cutting board and I cut them smaller. Yeah. You know, they're you expensive yeah. and the dog is going to be chewing them for 20 years. This <laughs> is the end of the class. So she, the, the, I'm like, all right, give the treat, you know, oh, no. give the treat, put a couple of treats <laughs> in your hand and feed the dog really quickly when they come to you, feed low so the dog won't jump up. And I'm like, run backwards so the dog will follow you. Then they, they put this cube in the dog's mouth that's so <laughs> and the dog's just like, sitting there chewing it like it was a bone i i said we're gonna have to cut those and make it a little smaller a little smaller yeah the liver treats are they're large but not right out of the box but not showing up to class like 
prepared. Yeah, be you ready. Didn't, you didn't even try, man. You I, like I have to up my. Oh, I'm sorry. I've just had a long day. I have too. You have to stop looking at your dog training class as like, oh, I have to train the dog. You have to look at it as, wow, I, I, I can have a break this. from reality. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely. get to just hang with this dog and this psychotic dog trainer that lives her life with cookies in her pocket. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great point because like as to kind of circle back to the topic, if <laughs> I think being prepared, having the right equipment, having the treats, having your snack sack having your leash all this stuff it's so in our control but really people don't hit the nail on the head with that every single time it's like we're so used to just like googling when we have a problem oh google will tell me how to fix this whatever but dog training it's like ai ain't gonna take over no it's not i mean um, i i walk like a lot during the day Nobody's going to do that for me, right? So it's it's a very tangible, real thing. And to be able to accomplish anything with your dog, like you really do have to like put the time and the reps in. And the only way that you really can learn in the beginning, in my opinion, is from another person. I think when you're older, like we can all smell bullshit when we see something online and we know how to learn as well from something that's good. Like I feel pretty confident that if I watch an instructional video, like I can pick up what the person mm-hmm. is laying down and I have a good chance of being able to replicate it in in reality. But like I've been at this for a while now, you know, if you're like brand new, don't do an online dog training class. Go find somebody that you can work with that you can trust and that's a, um, a good reputable person in your community, man. It's so worth it. Um, but yeah, anyway, just wanted to touch on that little topic tonight, have another little podcast episode. We really appreciate everybody tuning in. Anybody have any closing words, remarks on the topic? It was more of a rant session, but yeah, that's what we're all yeah, about here. Yeah, it was here. more of a rant. Yeah, that's okay. I don't think we actually talked about telling your dog no. Oh, we got to do that next time. All we'll right. Do that next time. We'll make some time. Yeah, because that one's going to be that, a... That's a deep one. Melissa has a lot to say Yeah, about I'm that. not mad. I'm passionate. Yeah. I'm feeling passionate. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking and Ruben is passed He's so passed out. out. This oh, room is hot. So we wholesome. came into this room as freezing. I know. I, I need a blankie. Blankie. I told I need you. a little blankie. The heat I cranks. Have, I have no room. temperature regulation. I put the heat up so high this room and now is I warm. just cut it down. <laughs> it's a warm room. It's warm. I'm roasted. This room is warm. Yeah, <laughs> this room is my sanctuary. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye.